Gabriel Fallen Toledo is a two-time major winner, a respected in-game leader, and a devastating opera. And while his success on Counter-Strike's biggest stages alone would be enough to mark him as one of the best players in CSGO history, his legacy is built of so much more than in-game results. This is his story. Fallen was born on May 30th, 1991, and grew up near Sao Paulo, Brazil. At a young age, he gained a love of video games by watching over his brother's shoulder as he played. He was a natural talent in Counter-Strike, and by 14, he was already competing on his first team, Crashers, in Brazilian CS 1.6 tournaments and World Cyber Games events. A few years later, he was asked to join Fire Gamers, whose roster included well-known talents like Lincoln FNX Lau and Renato Nak Nakano. Fallen's reputation quickly spread outside of Brazil thanks to impressive individual performances at ESWC and WCG events. His deadly ability with the op marked him as the heir apparent to Rafael Kogu Camargo, the best player in Brazil and star of MIBR. What happens is, amazingly enough, a player comes up as a rising talent who basically was as close to Kogu as you could ever get in play style, skill set, and even like the role that he used in the team. It was like a Kogu is Kogu 2.0. However, just as Fallen was coming into his own as a legitimate star level talent, Counter-Strike in Brazil began to wane. Players became split between 1.6 and the newer Counter-Strike source. While at the same time, the upper echelon competitors of the scene, such as Kogu himself, began to retire or move away from CS. But Fallen's passion for the game was unwavering, so he began teaching online Counter-Strike classes, the profits of which he used to create Games Academy in January of 2012, a school dedicated to teaching high-level Counter-Strike. The main idea of this project is to give you guys a good content on how you can become a better CSGO player. And we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff, a lot of tips, a lot of strategies, a lot of thoughts you need to understand, and how you can improve your game. For the next few years, Fallen continued to grind away, a figurehead around which Brazilian Counter-Strike rallied, but growth was slow, even after the release of Global Offensive in 2012. However, once Fallen himself made the switch to CSGO, his career quickly regained momentum. After a stint on Pro Gaming TD, Fallen became a founding member of Kaboom Esports' CSGO division. The roster, which reunited Fallen with FNX, also included Fernando Fer Alvarenga and the young guns of Lucas, Lucas One Telles, and Henrique Hen One Telles. The move would prove to be a significant stepping stone in Fallen's career, because it connected him with Fur, who has since become his right-hand man. Unfortunately for Kaboom, their first big international event, ESWC 2014, did not go well. Their flop plus a merger between Kaboom and Pro Gamers TD prompted a roster shakeup leading into Fallen's next big test, the MLG Aspen Invitational. Any moment. It doesn't matter, ZQK and Steel get it, it's over! Just like that, Cloud9 get obliterated against the Brazilians. Kaboom, I don't think anyone saw that coming, and Cloud9 looks stunned, they look speechless. And watch out world, Brazil's got a contender. They look so, so, so good as a team right now. Yeah. While they didn't make it out of groups, Fallen's preparation and tactics took center stage as Kaboom TD dismantled American favorites Cloud9 in an impressive map win. The performance caught the attention of the community, putting Fallen back on the map. Kaboom followed that up with a solid quarterfinal finish at ClutchCon 2015. Their upward trajectory seemed set. An invitation to the ESL1 Katowice 2015 qualifiers was Fallen's reward, but there was just one problem. Money. Kaboom TD couldn't afford to fly the team to Poland for the qualifier. For a team on the rise, missing the major qualifier would be a disaster. E aí a gente mostrou para o Brasil inteiro, para o mundo inteiro como estava treinando, explicava uma situação para a galera, e aí a galera foi doando dinheiro para a gente. Well, it's fantastic because in five days we raised all the money we needed. While the community initially came through with around 4,000 euros, it was Fnatic's Robin Flusha Ronquist who was the hero, donating a 1,400 euro portion of his share of Fnatic's first place winnings at the iOS Pantamera to the Brazilians. 
After an additional $2,500 donation by ESEA, Kaboom TD was able to make their way to Poland in time for the qualifier. But successfully qualifying would mean little if they didn't perform at the major itself, even with a new sponsor, Keed Stars, taking the financial worries off the team's mind. Thankfully, the Brazilians once again showed up in a big way. Gonna be a lot of people sitting back down. Oh, steal, shotgun headshot before being dropped in the back by Taz. Neo returns with frag number two. Pasha has the third. They're two away from the semi-finals and fallen. He's gonna have to make his way through the smoke. There's just no way into that site for them. And he does connect with his first hit and the second. Taz will go down. And CQK is waiting to make his entrance to the site with the help of Fallen as they come in side by side. CQK pushes towards Pasha. Fallen has fallen and so has Keen. Virtus Pro have destroyed Keen on map three. It's just a start for them. I know that they were happy with the, the score already, uh, like with the quarterfinals, but maybe next year or next event we can see more of them. Still well put to Keen. Like they had a great showing this tournament and I think they kind of proved everyone wrong that you know nobody else other than America and, and Europe can actually put, uh, play well in, in these events. They played really well and congratulations to them. The top eight finish was enough to earn the team legend status and a guaranteed spot in the next major. It was a massive weight off of Fallen's shoulders and the culmination of all he had worked for. Brazil, which had been quiet since MIBR's decline, was officially back on the radar. While they had already come so far, it was clear that Fallen and his squad couldn't reach their full capabilities while based in Brazil. And so they signed with Luminosity Gaming and moved to California, where they would be able to train with the best North America had to offer while also having more chances to compete in tournaments. The decision was not easy, as it meant being away from his family for an extended period of time, but it was one that had to be made if Fallen was to continue to lead his team to the top. The move to North America also meant adding star player Marcelo Coldzera David to the mix, who, under Fallen's guidance, would blossom into one of the best players in the world. Down there is Cold. Oh! Another top 8 finish at the next major, ESL1 Cologne, just a month later, not only proved that the result in Katowice wasn't just a fluke, but that the move to NA had been worth it. However, he knew there were plenty of talented players back at home in Brazil waiting for their opportunity to shine. So in August of 2015, he held a tournament called the Golden Chance. The winning team he would personally sponsor under the Games Academy brand and move them to North America. Not only would the new team be able to take full advantage of the NA practice environment, Fallen and Luminosity would have a new practice partner just as dedicated and passionate for the game as they were. The winners were familiar faces. FNX, Hen1, and Lucas1, along with young talents of Epitakio, Taco DeMello, and Gustavo Showtime Gonsalves. Only a few months into their time in NA, Luminosity Gaming had improved dramatically, but they were still bumping against the ceiling presented by European and CIS teams, especially Fnatic and Nadis Vincere. Once again, Fallen needed to take a close look at his team and make a hard choice. On November 23rd, only a few days before the Face It Stage 3 finals at DreamHack Winter 2015, Fallen moved FNX and Taco from Games Academy into Luminosity to replace Bolts and Steel. In addition, Zeus was brought in as a new coach in place of Knack. The move was sudden, and eyebrows were raised as the Brazilians headed into DreamHack with little practice to speak of. They were completely slaughtered in their first game. The remaining two Brazilians, he and Flusher go out, and that is going to be our second 16-0 of the day. Perhaps not the event we were hoping for, but Fnatic send a sign across to all the other teams. But Fallen wasn't going to let a little obstacle like an 0-16 beatdown stop him and his team. In a now legendary performance, Luminosity surged back into the event, defeating Ninjas in Pajamas. Yeah, it's, and it is gonna be it! Cold comes through, and Luminosity are going into the semifinals! Team Envious. And can he do magic twice? I think not. We will have the, up the upset. Luminosity will take out Envy. And Team Solo Mid. God, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna see Luminosity beating Envy, Nip, and TSM to go to the grand finals here at DreamHack Winter. 
in dramatic best of threes to finish second at the event behind Fnatic. And Cole in a one-on-one -on -one now. Olaf coming from Banana. Can he smash the dreams? of Luminosity. In goes the first set of nades to force Colt out of this position. There's the peak, and all of Makes it happen. Fnatic are the faces. Season 3 Fnatic champions. Something had clicked with the new Luminosity. With Fallen and Zeus's tactics, Fur's consistency, Colzera's superstar power, and the dynamic talents of FNX and Taco, LG finally had all the pieces they needed to take their game to the next level. If I was now Luminous D, how, all I would like recall from this tournament is a crazy comeback, being able to pick ourselves up even though getting beaten down in the first uh, day one. Um, they played different maps against different teams, had very, very decent result. They just changed two players. I mean, they should just look forward and just try to focus on their weaknesses. But this is just something to build on, obviously. After second place finishes at DreamHack Leipzig and the IEM World Championship in early 2016, Luminosity continued to prove that they had what it took to make a play for the next major title. Fallen was the talk of the town. Not only was his tactical mind and inspiring leadership a clear catalyst to LG's success, but he had returned to the level of play that had made him a star in 1.6. His team played with smarts, skills, and limitless passion, making them not only incredibly entertaining to watch, but easy to root for. Luminosity Gaming entered into the MLG Columbus Major in April of 2016, hungry for a title. Three on three with 50 seconds. They bring the bomb in towards the B bomb site. Taco's on the site. Cold gonna be going down now. Everything riding on Taco here. They almost lined up. He gets the one spray in. Turns around for it. Second kill, and there it is. The grenade has is gone. And Luminosity are in the semis of a major tournament. Position, but one versus three. This is for everything. This is for the map right now. Eco making its way around the smoke. The spam that he will spot Taco, but that's it. Luminosity with a comeback from 15-10. And then within a very, very short amount of time, plays their way into this kind of position. Seized is going to be going down as well. Fur with the follow-up kill. He goes down. Edward takes two. Looking for a third. He can't reload in time. He's not going to get the kill. Fallen will be going down. And now it is a one-on-two. Taco looking to see if he can close it out here and win it for the Brazilians. It's going to be a big turnaround there. Hits the headshot on Sousa. Now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Guardian versus Taco. It may just be destined to be. It's Luminosity winning their first major championship. It was one of the most dramatic runs in major history. Fallen had finally done it. More than 10 years after his first Counter-Strike tournament, he had restored Brazil to a position of power and glory in the world. It was indisputable that LG was the best team in the world, with Fallen their mastermind, their leader. Can you sum up to me just what this means to the country of Brazil and your teammates? Uh, just to sum it up, this is our dream coming true. And winning the biggest tournament ever on CSGO, means so much to me personally, and I'm sure it means a lot to my teammates as well. However, their success had not gone unnoticed, and with that came complications. The team became embroiled in a controversial scandal surrounding their sponsor and a potential switch to SK Gaming. Despite signing a letter of intent to re-sign with Luminosity Gaming, the team had signed contracts with SK Gaming just prior to MLG Columbus. The result was a lengthy public debate and a legal battle over the future of the team, which was eventually settled on June 24th, 2016, when the team officially transferred to SK. Their first tournament under the SK banner was the ESL1 Cologne Major, and just as they had at MLG, the Brazilians were gunning to take it all. Uh, our path to get here was very difficult, we had to go through a lot of things, so when we have a chance to win another title, we're gonna do everything we can to win it, so we're feeling a blessed to be here, and we're gonna make a great show and do our best. They didn't falter in their mission. There's no smoke though this time. He has the scout, he wanted to go for something, but Fallen did it better. Yet another terrific start here for SK Gaming. He goes on 5 HP, they have the man advantage, they still have all the firepower and fall, and they just can't get anything going. Another pass against him, he's always one step ahead. Yet another pick, JDM's been spotted by Fur as well. Hiko is working his way towards connected Fur, here's those steps. So they have all the information now, SK Gaming, to make the play happen. Three more kills, even with this big of a lead, even with so much going their way, they're still playing it slow. No one is rushing anywhere, no one's leaving anything to chance. JDM going down, Hiko going down, 
And now Nitro alone, one versus five, with a pistol being flanked as well. SK Gaming, what an incredible team. It's up to Nitro. He does get a shot and picks up an AK, but there's no saving it. He has to go and fight, and they're getting close. Here's the spray coming through. He takes out Fur as well, but he's down to 12 health. And now it's just all in the details. Easy for SK to pick it up here. Trying to walk through the smoke, but it's just not gonna happen. SK Gaming, second major championship in a row. They are your winners. Back-to-back -back major titles left absolutely no doubt. Not only was the roster one of the greatest to ever play CSGO, Fallen was one of the greatest in-game leaders of the modern era. Yeah, I think we've, we've found the perfect team. We have been trying for so long. I personally have been trying since 2009, seven years trying to achieve tournaments. And I have the perfect guys on my side. I mean, everyone from all of them played so well. Heading into the back half of 2016, everyone expected Fallen and SK to continue to take home the hardware. But behind the scenes, trouble was brewing. FNX, always known as a bad boy, was causing tension in the team. While SK's results were nothing to sneeze at, they were not where Fallen hoped they would be. He had fought so hard to reach the top, and anything less than first was a disappointment now that he had tasted victory. FNX was removed from the team, and SK Gaming played the E-League Major in January of 2017 with Ricardo Fox Pachero as a stand-in while the team sought out a new fifth member. Proving just how good the team was, even with a stand-in, SK Gaming still finished top four at the event. Eventually, the up-and-coming star of Immortals, Hal Phelps Vasconcelos, was selected to join the SK ranks. The team was once again focused, driven, and determined to win titles. The rest, as they say, is history. Towards that upper end, 2v4 situation, Phelps on the flank. Now he can do a lot of work. He gets the last kill on Mo, and SK Gaming are your Beyond the Summit <clears throat> 2017 Spring Champions. He's found out by Fallen as well. Just Nico and Kerrigan in the way of SK. A return to form. They dominated 2016. They won Summit, but they've yet to win a Premier in 2017. They've done it now. SK. 8-1 in maps. That talent. Every bit of that skill to clutch this round. There's the first. Position now is known. All three players will have their sights trained on his location. And there we have it. Break the curse. Fallen's story is one of hard work paying off, dedication reaping rewards, and passion leading to victory. His nickname of the Godfather of Brazilian CS is more than just a moniker. He's earned it. Games Academy, which started as just an online class all those years ago, now boasts its own content creators and has witnessed its former roster, now sponsored by Immortals, finish second at the recent PGL Major. Fallen was once named the most influential person in Brazilian esports in 2015 for his work building the community, teaching and spreading the word of esports. O CS é o que é hoje no Brasil graças a ele. Tem outras pessoas que também fazem as coisas, mas se não fosse ele, o CS não seria o que é. Então o cara é um ídolo no Brasil. He's a two-time major winner, a respected leader, a fierce competitor. In every aspect of his life, Fallen has gone above and beyond. And something tells us he's just getting started. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night. Woo! Thanks for watching. If you want more great content, be sure to hit that subscribe button.